what you said initially is like, is this person going to pull a plug on me? Like, but what you what you don't yeah. understand is when you really understand what your value is, when somebody pulls the plug on you and you've really done the work to be the best version of yourself, what ultimately happens, them pulling the plug on you is their loss. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Yeah. Yo, 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 what up, y'all? GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a special guest today. Now, I know I've said that a thousand times before, but this time I really mean it. A uh, good friend of mine and uh, content creator, rapper, uh, comedian, sketch, wild, uh, one of the head dudes, the regular dudes on Wild and Out. Uh, give it up for Coach Adil, y'all. What up, Coach? What's going on? Yeah, what up, what up, what up? Let me just take this time to say hello to my partner in crime, Harry. What the f- what's going on with you, B? Are you oh, good? Oh, Dante, I'm living the <laughs> life. If I was any happier, I'd be Lauren Bobart, uh, watching the musical <laughs> Beetlejuice. That's the only way I could be enjoying myself more. <laughs> At well, this moment I, of time. I would be her date. I would be her date. That's her true. Hand in my That's I true. mean, come on now. You, you got a, she got a nice handful of Republican crotch. What's better than that? Awesome. Awesomeness. Nice. nice. Uh, I want to get back in, get right into it. Coach, what's going on, bro? You good? Yeah, man. I'm, I'm chilling in the crib, trying to get my lighting like your, your awesome <laughs> background. Thanks, Damn. bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, me and Coach just did uh, Ball Baldashana. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just did Baldashana in U- Union on Union uh Union Square. Union Square. Now uh, what is that for those of us who might not know? What is that? Uh you know, so you got Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, and then you sure. have National Ball Day, which is September thirteenth. So I did a hybrid event. Yeah. So uh, I did a hybrid lot. holiday for, for bald people. And, uh, you know, bald Jewish New Year, essentially. It's weird because uh, I got I got circumcised right on 14th Street. So it was awesome. Man. It was awesome. Well, yeah. So it kind of <laughs> felt like you were close to home, literally. <laughs> it's it dope. It's dope. Me and, me, and, uh, me and Coach has gotten gotten close in the last, in the last, we've always been cool, but like we've gotten close in the last few and I wanted to have him more. And, and um, yeah. one of the things, when I, Co- Coach, do you have a girl right now? Or are you just free and swinging and mingling and whatever yeah no nah, i'm I'm, uh, I'm in the process of dating myself i think that's probably the best way to say it all yeah. right uh, is that yeah. is that by choice or is it what, what's the deal no it's not by choice okay <laughs> you know what i mean you got to take a good look at a lot of stuff that you got going on you know yeah is it is it, it that you look. just is it just that you got so much stuff going on that you don't have time or is it just you having you are you just not out in the game or what what's the deal well, no, right now I'm trying to make sure that uh, I think when you get a certain age, you know, um, see, originally, like in my earliest relationships, when I was like 20, you know, I was a late bloomer after mm-hmm. high school, I started dating like in college. I didn't really date in college. I dated like after I got out of jail and went back to college. So mm-hmm. like I was just really sort of uh, more definitely not prepared you know to Wait, you, went a healthy to, you went to jail coach yeah mm-hmm. what'd you go to jail for i was selling drugs you know uh, this was like uh, the thing i was like a petty drug dealer that thought he was you know yeah i get you it know, I tony get montana it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where'd, you, you, where'd you do that and where were you at when you did that what city um in the jersey shore Ocean so, County, New Brunswick. That's the kind of way where I started, you know. I so let me ask you: this. If you you said you were kind of a late bloomer, and then uh-huh. you, you got locked, you got locked up. Like, like how old were you when you got locked up? Um, you know, in my teenage years, it was like 18, 20, 21, and um, twenty three. So it was like it was like four little skid bids or or no nah, like really one two little skid bids you know but like um and then uh, yeah and so that was sort of that whole time era was mm-hmm. that 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 was it you know yeah, yeah, and yeah. trying to like integrate into normal society and just being just realizing that like um 
there's a lot of stuff that you have going on that you're not even really capable of being in relationship with another person. You can't take care of yourself, you know, man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of people carry that into their adult life. And I'm definitely somebody that's like replaced a lot of uh work in the street stuff with like work in my music and career. Right, right. Um just because it's like second nature to just like bury emotions and things of that and just navigate it to work, 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 you know? Um, cause you just always trying to stay afloat, figure out, um, right. not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just a thing to accept. So when you make time for another person in your life and fit them into, you know, there's just learning how to deal with somebody else besides yourself is, mm. is crazy. Right. Well, Especially if you lo- love that person. So that's, yeah, that's the stuff. Well, I mean, I, I think you're just being <laughs> I think you're being, you know, by doing that, you're being kind. But uh, did you grow up? You, did you grow up in a in a traditionally Jewish home or what was the mm, like my parents are Israeli. So immigrant parents, I think so much focus on like their my my father's father's whole family was killed in the Holocaust. Mm. Uh, my mother's father's whole family was killed. Like, so they mm. just the way they were taught was like. You know, don't talk about stuff, shut up, work, just eat it and do what you got to do. Right, right. And now, you know, obviously, like that stuff didn't work because I was ended up in the drug stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I mean, when you, you know, it can work in the drug state. <laughs> I mean, if you keep yeah. your head down and work, I mean, that's the yeah. greatest drug dealers of all times are the ones that kept their head down and work, you know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. If you're still a drug dealer, then that actually does work. But I am uh, not so any that. drug dealers that are in the audience, just so you know, keep your yeah. head down and keep working. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Keep doing your thing and don't tell anybody anything. And um, if, you, <laughs> if you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life. So you know, yeah, keep yeah, that yeah. in mind. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> so it, it's it's a funny thing because I have this, you know, through doing consultations and doing the show, I've I've come up with this 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 kind of theory about immigrant parents, and I mean, this is kind of across the board immigrant parents kids have the have the the least amount of uh like emotional acuity and and understanding relationships than anybody because of that because you know your parents come from this kind of situation where where it's all about survival and so you're always surviving you're not really learning to access what we you know whatever your happiness is or whatever that whatever that yeah. um, you know, whatever the whatever self fulfillment is, you know what I mean? Because it's you're taught to just sh- like shut up, go to work, go to school, grind. Emotion, emotions are weak. Yeah. Emotions are weak. Yeah. And then you become emotional and then mm-hmm. it just burst out. So you're right. extremely emotional. So you don't know how to control your, you know what I mean? You don't actually yeah. know how to work with your emotions, right? Right. And it's like, it's like day one on the job. You're like, oh, my, my God, you know, yeah. this is intense. So for me, um, I'm getting out of a relationship, but like, I don't think you're, you are getting out of a relationship. The relationship's over, but mm-hmm. for you, it's like hard to start a process. Like what, you know, happens. So, you know, for, at least for men, for, and, and I'll say for myself, yeah. you know, I could stick with, I would stick with things for too long and not know how to address things because I come, what I learned is that my parents definitely have issues, but they stayed together no matter what. So they probably right. go years without talking about shit. Point in case, I was in Germany. This is a crazy story. I did a tour in Germany. I called up my uncle, right? My uncle had married some. My uncle, you know, born in Israel, moved to Germany, married someone. Um, I called my uncle. Like, no one picked up the phone for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So my father said, I'll show them. I won't talk to them for a whole year. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like that. Fuck. Yeah, that was so crazy. But to my, but to my parents, it's like, yeah, no, no, fuck that. Like, yeah, like, that makes sense. It, yeah, that, I mean, and to us, you're just like, I don't think that's so healthy. You maybe could have just been like, hey, is there a reason? But that's sort of how our my family is processed. Uh, I look at other people's family; they're so mostly talking, supportive, and I'm just like, wow, you know, that's beautiful. So I have, so I'm trying to learn a lot on how to uh, not stuff a lot of feelings out and like learn how to say things you really want to. And that affects my work, affects all my relationships across the board. And of course, it affects the romantic ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, of course, because those those are more 
those relationships are a lot more delicate too. I mean, it's a lot more delicate. There, there's a level of fear that exists because you're yeah. into somebody. You, you know, you don't want to lose them. It's you know these insecurities. Exactly. They people go from being your partner to being like an authority figure mm. because they're like, oh, don't make me pull the plug on this. And you're like, mm. I don't want to, you know, piss you yeah. off. And you're like, you know, because you got to address things. I would say watching my family's relationships of romantic ones, I don't, it's not like I'm like, oh my God, my parents are so in love. Mm. <laughs> my brother is so in love. My other brother is so in love. Yeah, yeah. Look at them and they'll be like, yep, they're married. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it, it, it owns a, a relationship, yeah. and and you know basically sex, children, everything becomes sort of like a it's a job, a job it's like obligatory, it's a, yeah, it's just yeah, what you're supposed it, to do. Yeah, this is just culturally you. This is what you you do. You get married. You do this. You do that. You do whatever, and then you move on. So I mean, um, am am I wrong in assuming that Israeli Jews are different than, say, for instance, N New York Jews? Like, just a hundred percent. Okay, could Very, you talk okay, about maybe, that a little bit? Yeah. So there's like a little hierarchy, and I think all sort of sure, absolutely, like, all sort of. I'm sure like this in the black community, Spanish community and Puerto yeah. Rican. Don't call me Dominican. I'm Puerto Rican, you know, or, yeah, or yeah. Mexican, El Salvadorian, et cetera. Yeah. Um, Ecuadorian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Highbrow. Oh, well, I'm Colombian or don't. Yeah. I'm from, I'm from not Bogota. I'm from Medellin. Like it's a yeah. different place. Right. Yeah. Even so, within the, even within the country, there's that, you know? Yeah. So in Israeli Jews are definitely like, uh, uh, we're from Israel. It's fine. And the, you understand? They grew up around all Jews, right? And mm -hmm. and Arabs. And then you have American Jews, which are like come from a lot of Ashkenazi Jews. Now in Israel, there's so far. I mean, Ashkenazi Jews aren't as high as the population. I mean, it's mm -hmm. third. At certain times, it was different. Um, there are Jews from other parts of. In New York, there's Persian Jews, and the Persian uh -huh. Jews are like, "Oh, we're not Ashkenazi. You get Syrian right. Jew. It's even another." So, I mean, definitely different, and there's definitely a different home structure, right? right. There's definitely a different home structure. And if you're just like, saying coming from an older country, divorce, it's like you know, it's not like it's not like an option almost. It's like you right. just you just like stay with each other. Mm -hmm. In America, the Jews therapy, bagels, box, it's just a kind of different kind of culture. It's a softer, and, it's uh, a softer kind of I would, just a, yeah. Yeah, the softer. Yeah, I would say it's a softer. Yeah. It's a great way to put it. But I mean, obviously there's unique cases in every situation. Yeah, know? I mean, there's always exceptions but, to the rule, but I mean, I think you can't look at the the true culture if you don't I mean, the whole point of making generalizations is so that you escalate the dialogue so that you have an a, a, a <laughs> understanding of the patterns um yeah. and and i'm and, but and there's jewish day camp and summer like i never did that yeah. we did sports we went to senate like we spoke hebrew at the home and that was that's definitely it and like israeli jews are very much like well we speak hebrew and this is enough and uh, we're mm -hmm. from the nation and mm -hmm. uh what's the you know, what's the big but they love america but you know ugh, this place is the worst Mm. American Jews just deal with different stuff yeah, in yeah. America. Yeah. yeah. Is was so a lot. I have a lot of uh, uh, like just American Jewish friends and they're, you know, do they have do they have the over? I mean, the Israeli Jews have the overbearing mom. Is that a thing as well? And is in as in. Yeah, I think you have a Jewish mother is a Jewish mother wherever they mm. are in the world. You know, I mean, if a mother wants to worry, my mother's like your son, your brother. He never calls me. Da, 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 da. I'm worried. And I'm like, mm. you know, I got to stick it to my brother. But, um, you know, mother's worry and stuff. I guess. Parents and it's are also like I mean, if you think about it historically, it's, you know, like we we find that the history like, like I don't think that we <laughs> deal with the fact that there's a. You know, like you know, for the most part, this is a relationship show, right? And what yeah. I, I am, and there's a lot of people who are making these. You know, on the internet, they're making. I mean, all these guys, like these guys who are like killing it, fresh and fit, and alpha male, and Kevin Samuels, and all these dudes are very defined about what the roles are. To Andrew Tate and stuff. And one of the things that I think is is uh, that I think that none of them take into consideration. And the reason why I even take into consideration is because I'm much older. You know, I just have more experience and I have a longer, a, a wider cross section of, 
of people that I've helped and I've dealt with in this. And what you what you find is nobody's really considering the trauma, the the trauma that people go through and the fact that there was only it's very recent that we're talking about where people understand therapy. So like if you have families that were killed in the in the Holocaust and you know you literally as a mother your children could end up dead or disappeared or something. I mean, the the worry is not unreasonable in terms of the way what your socialization is. And then there's never there's never a reboot of that. You know what I'm saying? That's always a present thing. Not only that, but there's studies that even talk about that trauma is is uh, built into the DNA, that the uh, g- genetic trauma that we pass on from generation to ger- generation, and then we bring it into these relationships. You know, just not just, you know, male-female but relationships, but even family relationships. Yo, if if you love what we're doing, please, the best way to support us is on patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, that would really help us. Yeah, we're, that's where we do all the bonus content every week. Uh, you you get a lot of perks for joining us and supporting us. We do a bonus show every week. Uh, this week's show, we talk a lot about how to build up your confidence and the important or not, importance of not lying. Plus, uh, if you love the show and want to access the archives from starting at episode one where we're Beige Phillip, that's over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's the way to support us. Another way to support us if you love us, uh, we do relationship consultations. If you want a relationship consultation from me, you go uh, at email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And if you want a relationship uh, co- a consultation from Dante, you can go to dantenero.com and click on consult. Right. I would say I come from a family that, like, I told my parents, I was like, if you guys died tomorrow, like, I wouldn't know anything about you. You guys only like, open up. You know what yeah. I mean? I know. Um, Do you ask my, questions in that? Do you, like, yeah, you have to prowl. Like, even when my, my aunt, like, my aunt is really good. My father's like, oh, don't they remember my mother's like, what do you want me to tell you? You've, my father told me absolutely nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right, right. My grandfather passed away. They found like, you know, 30 racks like in buried in the floors and like coffee cans. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? It's like a mind state of people that, that right. this is how they're operating. They're not thinking of like, oh, let me do, you know, buy rose. It's a little you know what I want to, you know, I want to paint. I'm going to get some easels and paint. <laughs> so listen, my mom now is yeah. coming into this where she's like painting and she's knitting and she's doing and she's really like nurturing her child that was uh-huh. in her that like didn't get to grow up. Because you think my mother got married as a child. Like I went to jail. My mother got married at 21. Like I went and right. I went to jail in turn right. 21 in jail. So like that just it's just two different things. I'm looking at the pictures. She's 40, you know, 42. Three kids, um, you know, zero right. kids, and I'm like right. rapping on a subway train, and like, you know, I'm, right. you know, just just a different time, and so driving now, her out of her mind because she's worried every second well, of yeah. every <laughs> right. But I call, I love, I love as I, now that I'm older, I love building relationship with her and asking her about certain things, and and uh, because she, like now now that I go to therapy and I'm learning about like how to you know get people to open up to me and they they don't want to like they don't need to go to therapy like they're 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 going to be fine without ever going but they can i always think of like ways that i could build my relationships with my brothers with my nephews and nieces and with my parents and it's an ongoing thing like why i like to go home is because i'll learn more about my family the more i spend time with them you know if you're just like hi bye hi bye that's sort of the family we come from so it's like we don't have any problems or any fights or the family reunions but it's almost better i think it's sometimes better that some of these people do have fights like it's uh, i think the term is well i mean if you're not fighting i mean the only way you can the only way you're going to find conflict is if yeah. you're engaging with each other. If you don't engage yeah. with also, each other, then you never that's, fight. You that's know? the only time you get any information, like any real, yeah, oh yeah, that's why you fucking left your first wife, you piece of shit. Like, and you're like, <laughs> oh geez, I had no idea. <laughs> That's why you have a second family, motherfucker. You're like, all is, right, hold on, let me write this Is that why you out. call him Uncle Dad? Yeah. You're like, that's weird. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the only yeah. way to figure anything out. Well, yeah, you know, dude, I, I think the other thing, too, is we when it comes to relationships, we're coming to having like healthy, 
healthy, uh, you know, romantic relationships, the way we, I mean, it's going to sound a little creepy, but it's, it's, it's the way that we deal in our families that give us the, the practice to deal with these relationships. I mean, when we look at, our, you know, you look at a, your, your mom, that's the representation of what womanhood is. When you're a little kid, she's a woman and your dad is a, the, a man. And then you go, okay, uh, my understanding of this is, is this is what my understanding of it is because it's what you're, what you're confronted with. Right. My mom was a nurse. Mm-hmm. She is like the one takes care of everyone if they get sick. My mm-hmm. mom cook of the house, so she cooks. So like, you, I am like as an adult, I'm like, what do I know how to do? Like, I don't right. know how to. Like, I need how to learn how to do certain shit. You know, like tell my father, teach me how to change a tire. Like like, like certain thing of be man. I could, you could put me in a. I've learned how to like throw me in Kansas and give me a microphone and a venue. And I could come out with hundreds of dollars and a place to sleep at someone's house. I could teach my children that, you know, right, <laughs> right, how to, right, right, right. That's not necessarily like what, what I, my father, when I, like when I grew up, he was like, well, this is how you run a business. Cause he ran his own business. And he was like, even though you're just starting and I'm super grateful for that. But when it came to relationships and romance and things like that, a lot of that was built on my own fantasies and just drifting out of sort of like what I do to, to make a woman happy and and uh yeah. you know in my last relationship i was really i think uh if there's anything i could you know you learn what could you do different it's uh like the ability to be like wrong and know that you don't really know shit you know what i'm saying and you, if yeah. you're open to learning and getting better with each other and i don't think like you know at certain times everyone's like all right may, might need to have to put a pause on this you know what i mean and, and take some time to learn more about me and i'm like well i have a lot of unresolved trauma I started going to therapy every week, paying a shitload of money to do all different kinds of trauma therapy that I didn't realize that I have. And I've right. been, you know, so. Yeah. I, I'm, I mean, I think uh, we're, I think what happens too is you, 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 you so you said you were uh, something that I heard you say initially, you said that you were a late bloomer. Did you, when you said that you were like, you lost your virginity, how old were you when you lost your virginity? And, and after high school, after high school. So what were you like, yeah. 18 or so? Yeah, about to. Yeah, that was like the summer I turned 18. Yeah. Now, did you did you run? Did you just run it? Did you like run a tear or or did you just or just no, was kind of mm. just like um, it was just somebody that. Yeah, it was. It, 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 I think like that's when I really started getting high, you know? Yeah. yeah. So like any of my interactions were like with women at that time in college were like just hookups and maybe you know i'll hook up with somebody and stuff like that and then anybody that i would like you know date for a few months or whatever it was just like i was like so obsessed almost like oh my god i love this per- like you know, right 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 like it was like uh this is the person i'm gonna be with forever oh my god you know and that was yeah, the yeah. Kid, you know <laughs> that that had, that had a lot to do with i guess it's just i mean i think everybody does that it's, i just think when you're a when you're a late bloomer it happens. It it just looks goofier because you're older. You know, like I remember me. I remember my girlfriend in first grade. You know, what I mean, like it was no sexual thing, but I was like, "Ooh, I this little Panamanian girl." Her name was. I still remember her name was Damaris, and she had little shiny patent leather shoes, and she had two long ponytails, and she was missing the tooth in the front. And I remember saying, "That's my that's my girlfriend." You know what I mean? Like from first grade, um, right. I remember going to <laughs> second grade. I can tell you, second grade, it was a Puerto Rican girl. Her name was Suzette Charles. No, no, yes, Suzette Charles. She was a little Puerto Rican girl. Another girl with a really long ponytail, right? And then uh, in third grade, it was well, uh, you, my- you started early with abandoning <laughs> black women. Uh, yeah. No, no, because my my two, <laughs> my two first of all, uh, Damaris was was dark skinned Panamanian. She was chocolate Panamanian. I don't think Yamanika would say that counts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's Yamanika funny. would say it don't count. I yeah. don't think that Yamanika would say it mm. counts if I dated the queen of she, the blackest queen of Sheba. Somehow, I I don't protect. You somehow, you're women. still a traitor. I, a I, I'm a traitor. I'm a race traitor. So, um, but uh, 
third grade was Monica Perryman and uh, and Donnery Pert. They kind of shared me, you know, like throughout the year. Right. <laughs> and uh, and then it was Michelle Watson in fourth grade. I, like so, but I'm, I'm my point is, like I I have these names and these pictures in my head from very 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 early on so like i was getting this practice this practice you know this this kind of relationship for no matter how juvenile and how childish it was um it was you know what i'm saying i was practicing i i like you you like me you know let's right. hold hands you want some of my candy you know what i mean whereas it's funny because you talk how you talk about yamanika so yamanika was super religious and super christian right mm, yeah so yamanika yeah. on the she was on the show and she said that she didn't lose her virginity until she was 26 right so then she you know and then she has a, this religion is telling her that her 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 cookie is the greatest thing in the world and you don't give it away and now you're 26 and you're dealing with men who have already had multiple partners right and they don't care about they you this cookie that you've been saving for Matt and we don't care like we just trying to get it and hit it and quit it because you know we're immature and that's our mentality you know what i mean so right it, it, a lot of times and a lot of times with the guys who i consult with um, and, and the guys who call me and ask questions and stuff, a lot of them are late bloomers, but they're also late bloomers and they're older. And now they are forced to deal with women who have had extensive socialization and an understanding of the social dynamics, what their power is, what their power isn't. So if you, you, you're a guy and you, you're 18, 19 years old, and you start getting laid at 18, 19 years old, this, this chick might've had multiple partners already and if she didn't have multiple partners even if she didn't have multiple sexual partners she's had mul multiple emotional partners because from the inception of her you know being a woman guys are hitting on her guys are you know yeah. what i'm saying this is a this is an ongoing thing and one of the things that i say all the time is two things that men are expected to do with no with no um I, I with, no, with no practice is yeah. relationships and sex somehow by osmosis you're just supposed to know what to do you know um and it just it's it, it's the first thing i tell guys when i when i'm talking to them as i go first of all you got to forgive yourself for not knowing something that you were never taught and when you say that out loud it seems so absurd because why I would did you the thing? I never talked to my brother about my my one brother. My oldest brother is Orthodox Jewish with five kids. My other brother married non Jewish girl um, from like high school. I come from a town where everyone married somebody from high school. So mm -hmm. like by twenty seven, they were popping out kids and stuff. Right. But like twenty seven, I had like three years or four four years sober and I'm like touring the fucking country and I'm like, I'm going to be a rapper and I'm selling my CDs and t-shirts and, and this is what we're doing. And then 29, I moved to LA, you know, and get my own place and that's yeah. it. And the rest is like, you know, then my career, I've been full time with what I do since then. And like, if you don't have your brothers, right. And who am I, who am I learning for all my, all the people, my brother was in a full on marriage, marriage. and then left. And then, like, I didn't really talk to him about the ins yeah. and outs of how he felt and this and, you know, dating and what do you, you know, you know, what's the, you know, tips on girls and all my friends, all the people that you talk to, you know, you realize, like, bro, all you guys have failed relationships. Like, <laughs> none yeah. of you guys are like, like, who is your, who are you talking to? Like a homie that would be like happily married with a kid and be like, oh, this is the guy that you would probably want to model your stuff off of. And so a lot of us have like, you're getting advice from like a fire hydrant that's, you know, been peed on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like yeah. opening the water comes out wrong and it's dirty. And you're like, Oh man, I mean, it does work. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Go for the advice. You feel me? Well, uh, it's also a question of right. whether so, yeah, or not I'm, they know anyway. I'm myself. You know, right. I mean, yeah, exactly. You know. Forgiving yourself is is a crazy concept, especially because yeah. you're like you forgive yourself. You should have had it figured out five years ago. You got to forgive yourself now. And then you got to give yourself another two, three, four years to really, you know? Well, it's, it's funny that conceptually we look at that in terms of relationships, but you, you've been rapping for how long now? Me? Yeah. I've been rapping since I was 17. Okay. So, so 25 and, years and 25 years. How old are you now? 42. 
Okay, so what I'm saying is you wouldn't expect somebody who started rapping two years ago to be good at it. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, it's an absurd, it's an absurd standard to put people under. So, and I and I sell like I I'll, I'll I'll do talk to a dude and he'll be talking to me and he'll say he'll say hey uh yeah you know I don't have, I didn't have a lot of girls I don't have a body I, and 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 their their perception is right away that because I have that I expect them to and that is. The empathy that, you know, you have to have the empathy to get people to open up anyway. That You have to make people like you give a fuck. And not only do you give a fuck, but that you care about their personal growth. And what I find in, in the, on the Internet in general, all the relationship gurus, all of the pickup dudes, all of these guys. You watch all of them. I watch uh, it's there. It's so much of it. You, you yeah. like one thing and your whole thing is like. Is your whole that. algorithm is that. But it's. They have no idea what they're talking about because there's no empathy. And so there's no real sense of there's no real sense of like you can't you can't learn from somebody until you you have some level of empathy that you're you're willing to walk walk in their shoes. And and it's interesting because you always embraced, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you you're unapologetically Jewish, but you've always as long as I've known you've always embraced like hip hop culture and music and art and stuff like that. And so it gives you a, a, you know, even that is something that's that, that makes you gives you a sensitivity to emotions and stuff like that, because you can't do art without art doesn't happen without passion. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. Harry and I, Harry was talking to me about this won't name and no names, but people that are comics that are, emotionally unattached to their material quite yeah. sure you know who and i'm talking about harry yeah, i i know who you're talking about but and it's never <laughs> as good harry out him out him that makes your show better <laughs> <laughs> i still gotta work with these motherfuckers i gotta work with these motherfuckers well that's they, we've had you know, a couple 70 percent of the audience too you know that a lot of times but good yeah harry, it's, but but you when you're not connected to it it means less it just it it feels like it, it just doesn't feel like it's together and you have to be connected with whatever you do. And so mm-hmm. it's, the, but the tough part is mm-hmm. finding out who you are. Cause a lot of these, some of these artists, they just, they, they're managing to do the art, but they're able to, they have a talent to do it, but they forget to connect themselves with it. But you have to figure out who you are. And that's a tough challenge for any human being, let alone a uh, performer or an entertainer. So what again, do you, go ahead, go ahead. let me ask you a question. Cool. Um, cool. Just in regards to like, when you start liking, like, uh, do you know a lot about attachment style, like um, anxious attachment, dismissive avoidance, you know, fearful um, avoidance? Ex- explain, I, I probably have come up with it or talked about it in some way, but explain, I mean, you're, you're using these technical terms, but let me explain it to me and then I'll, I'll tell you what my thought is. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess there's, you know, the idea, okay, opposites attract, like it's a thing, right? It's just like, um, I'm a rapper, I'm out. Well, I like, I don't necessarily want to be like dating another rapper or a DJ. Right. That's like also right. like, I'm, you know, everyone's like, oh, that would make sense. You guys get to do it together. I'm like, no, you know, I would kind of want something to balance, you know, like I'm on the scale. Yeah. Uh, anxious attachment um, in just a sense is like, let's say uh, things that make you anxious. Like for me, if someone pulls away or if you, if I call up Dante, and that he doesn't pick up, and then I'm feeling bad. You know, it gets me anxious. I might call Dante again and be like, "Damn, Goshi called me three times. Calm yeah, down." Yeah. You know, yeah, and then yeah. you're like, "This guy's calling a little bit too much." You know, and whenever someone encroaches in your space, you're sort of like, "All right, dismissive and get away." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah good to hear from you." You know, uh, mm. I hope your day went okay. You're like, "Who's this?" I hope your day still goes yeah. great. But you, were, yeah. you said okay, and then an anxious attachment would always internalize that. And the more someone pulls away, they go in dismissive, avoidant. It's like they dismiss things and kind of push away as like a safe space. For yeah. me, my safe space is being overbearing, so I'm gonna end up alone. Dismissive is let me push them away, so I'm alone. Fearful mm-hmm. is sort of an, another. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm learning how to cope with that, like and just become more secure. Secure mm-hmm. is like yeah. being able to, I guess you would say, read the room. Right, 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 right. Like, right. You well, you're saying socially, you read the room to know where you're at and whatever. So yeah, I think it falls. That falls under. I think Dante and I was just talking about this recently under self-esteem and yeah. feeling yeah. that you're worth those things. So the self-esteem and knowing like 
you are concerned about yourself, so you assume that somebody else doesn't want to pick up the phone because they don't want to hear, they don't want to talk to you, because mm. you feel like you're that's who you are to them, or that you're not worthy of it, as opposed right. to like they should pick up my call. If I was important, they'd pick up my call immediately. You know, so you start to it's it's a feeling about self esteem and whether or not you're worthy of that either the love or the adulation. And that's where a lot of I things. Have, I couldn't have explained it. I couldn't have explained it better, Harry. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I just a tear just my eyes oh, just geez. welled up. <laughs> I, I uh, thought, you know, yeah. We have these little conversations between us. You know, we talk yeah. about them between us, and that's how we we solve it. You know, because I well, I'm I've gone through the big issue I've had with self esteem or that was related to self esteem. For a long time, I had an issue and still kind of have an issue. I feel I cannot get past when somebody else is uncomfortable in a room, meaning like it, it affects me if somebody else is unhappy, even if I don't know the people, if they're strangers, but mm. especially in the confines of a relationship or something. So, you know, if my girl is unhappy, now I'm unhappy because I, I want I want her to be happy. So it's either did I do something wrong to make her uh, unhappy or could I be doing something to make her happy? And, you know, you th those are valuable things to have, to have empathy. But I have almost too much to the point where I can't get it's past. Codependent. It yeah, it's codependent. It becomes codependent. Yeah. Um, yeah. You I know, think it's, there's a there. No, go ahead. You go. No, go, gosh. I, I think I think um, I read this term and this is something that like represents my family. I don't know. It's the, I heard the word is called confluence, I think might be the word, which is basically mm. this. It, and it might be using the wrong word, so don't quote me on that. But mm. the the perspective that no fighting is good, fighting is bad. So mm. as long as there's no arguments, then it's good. We don't argue. We don't disagree. And we're just yes men. We're just yeah. yes men. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everybody knows a yes man technically isn't good because there's no critique. There's no like, how do we yeah. get better, right? And right. going with that into relationship is basically like I learned that from home, right? Oh, everything looks fine. Everything's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. Um, fine is an acronym for fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Like, um, and that's a. Uh, um, I'm very insecure. Like, I'm I'm insecure. I'm like working on being secure, and it's mad embarrassing to say I'm insecure. I'm secure. I could go in front of ten thousand people and do some improv. But put me in a room with one person and just trying to become intimate. I'm like, ah, let me run for the hill. Right, because if um, you if you're in front of ten thousand people, this that they see they only see what you present. You yeah, know it's Instagram. It's the highlight reel. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's me performing. Yeah. I'm putting on a show. But to be like Rami and be like, okay, relationship with somebody you you are. You can't be Kosha Dills all the time. You can't be you right. know Dante Nero on stage all the time doing a set you know other times you know you're just doing regular shit and for me in a relationship I have to that's like my main goal is is to you know take the uh take the performer skin off when mm -hmm. they come down and, and uh but that was also I I learned how to do that because that was like you know something that sort of how I dealt with being just a person in my house you know what I mean how do I how do I get that self-esteem yeah. which you have low most performers i feel have low self-esteem but when we perform in front of people we operate off the highs that we get from the adrenaline from making people laugh and singing your words or whatever your performance technique is now mm -hmm. now harry come up with his podcast and get a bunch of fucking five-star reviews on itunes you know yeah feel good about yourself you know what i mean well um the, the thing with that is the reason you feel comfortable with that is because you've practiced that little by little and you mastered it because the first time you got up on stage i'm sure it didn't go great or it didn't go as well as it could have for most comedians it doesn't go great when you first start out for you know, I, I assume the same thing is for hip-hop you know like any art and you practice it and you it's going back to what dante was saying that you know, it's one of those things that we're expected to do without any practice. So the reason you're not, you go in front of an arena full of people, and you're not scared is because you worked your way up to it. You built it, you practiced little by little. And that's why you have that confidence. But we don't tend to practice a lot of that stuff because we don't even know what we're supposed to be working on psychologically until years later. You know, there's stuff yeah. I'm figuring out now that I, you know, had, I, I haven't worked on, you know, it, it, you know, at this point in my life. 
there, there's a yeah. there's an interesting thing you it's interesting you bring this up and Harry brought this I'm glad Harry brought this up because Harry and I I don't know if we talked about this show we probably mentioned it but Harry called me up and he was like man I have this I'm, I'm have this thing where like if my girl is upset then I'm like I'm upset and where and a lot of the things that you're talking about I guess are, are very common among performers but not just I I don't think it's any different than performers I think what happens is it's it's just hyper it, it, it's hyper exposed because we're performance. So, but there's a, there's a few things that I could, I could speak to the self-esteem. I can speak to, you know, even what, like I, I am, um, one of the things is the, when you, when you, you are charged off of the accolades that strangers give you, right. The first problem with that is that when you do that, I'm not saying you're not supposed to enjoy, um, what you do, what you do, and the fact that people enjoy what you do. But when you, what you have, you, you can't pick that up. Like you can't let them decide what your value is. If you're Instagram followers, if you're, I mean, I've, I'm, I, I, so many dudes I know, famous dudes, guys who are million, millions, making millions and they're online and they're killing it and da, 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 da. And they're so insecure this is something that I've said a hundred times. I, I, I've said this a hundred times. I mean, Dave Chappelle, absolutely the GOAT, or at least one of the GOATs. But I've never seen him go out and not drink a liter of tequila every time he goes out. Like, if you tell me, at, and I'm a 57-year-old man, there's no way. I mean, and you know, you you clean and sober now. When yeah. somebody's doing that, you're you're medicating. You're, you're medicating. Why are you medicating? You're medicating because your open state is not good enough. You're, you're coping. And you don't even need to medicate on drugs and alcohol. Like no. you can medicate off your work or your, or like. You can medicate Instagram on your likes or... on the, on the, on your, yeah, I mean, yeah. we medicate off the exactly. accolades of, so it's, it's funny. So that's the first thing. And I would, and I, Harry brought this to me and I was like, Harry, I mean, that's insecure. And I don't think he could see it in a minute because it's like, you're going, look, I care about my girl and I care about whether she's happy. I mean, how is that? How does that relate to self-esteem? But it, what it is, is what am, what, what, what am I doing? It's sort of like what you're saying, what you said initially is like, is this person going to pull the plug on me? Like, but what you, what you don't yeah. understand is when you really understand what your value is, when somebody pulls the plug on you and you've really done the work to be the best version of yourself, what ultimately happens, them pulling the plug on you is their loss. So it's funny. Yeah. I was at, a, I was at Eastville comedy this weekend and I was, um, I was with hanging out with Dutch. Dutch is the bouncer there. Right. And he, and, and I, I had some really great shows um so janine janine garofalo was there and i love watching janine because i love janine is absolutely, absolutely she's the the history of alt comedy like she invented all comedy and so her comedy is in a way it's very kind of this is what happened today this is what i want to talk about it's not really scripted and stuff it's kind of almost almost improv and, and we all know that improv is always is because it's not, it, I mean, sometimes it's great. Most of the times it's not <laughs> because when you, hone <laughs> the, you know what I mean? When you hone it down to what it is, it's always better when it's prepared. Something is always better. Well, it's high risk, not. high reward. You know, you're trying right. something and when it works, it's amazing. But when it, when you don't hit that landing, <sighs> it's a catastrophe. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you got to, I mean, what is that you say, Harry, all the time? I always remember you saying this. If a guy, if a baseball player, uh, if he hits over 300, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. If that's you go, 300 yeah. out of 1,000, though. Yeah. Right? Right? That's 1,000 times. Like, that's not even, that's barely a third, right? That's a. That's not even a third. No. That's not it, a third. That's, right? that's <laughs> less than, yeah, three out of 10 times. That you, you Only three out of 10 times, which means seven out of 10 times you you have failed. But so in baseball, it, those are amazing numbers. But those comedy, are amazing numbers. But it, and then the guys who hit the home runs are the guys who they yeah, when they strike out, they strike out bad. It's ugly, you know. So yeah. dust is flying. Big ass swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you need the big I, ass. Swing. I just did that in a relationship thing and uh, with an ex, and with you know, uh, did what? <laughs> what a big ass swing. <laughs> I took a big swing. I don't. Yeah, it's, I did a nice 
When, yeah, and then other yeah. times you're like, okay, maybe you need, maybe I need to go back to the batting cages and just work on my shit for a little bit, and then I could come back and get drafted again, and maybe I see yeah, on the field. Well, you know and here's where I disagree with that because being yes, you should be in the batting cages, but you also, but being in the batting cages is never the same thing as being in a, in, in a game. You no. know what I mean? Like you, what you can be in the batting cages all you want. Yeah, there's this technique and stuff, but what, I mean, we see this all the time when somebody gets on stage. And then the, the, so it, here's a principle that I talk about all the time in the show is that um, you never can let fear have a, a seat at the table because the minute you let emotion, emo, any kind of emotion into the decision making, you're cutting, you are cutting your mental capacity down to a third. So if you're afraid, if you're arrogant, if you're, if you're, you're, you, I mean, in order to make clear, you, and you see this with boxers all the time, is that a boxer trains to get punched in the face and not have his emotions moved by it. He, he learns to operate this right. in the same way beyond emotion. And that's because if you're angry, if you're this, whatever, that's where you make the mistakes. So, um, you, you know, you can't let emotion have a seat at the table. Um, and that is, you know, I used to think it was just anger, but it's not just anger. It's everything, any kind of emotion. When you're making yeah. a decision, even in a relationship, you got to step back and say, well, is what I'm feeling really what's going on? Is that the dynamic? I can't tell you how many times I've count, I've counseled dudes and, you know, I mean, you know, we're breaking up and I love her and I go, well, why do you love her? Well, I mean, you know, she I mean, <laughs> and they can't tell you. Because the, the the relationship has gone to trash for so long. And then when they do talk about what they love about the, the girl or what the guy, girl loves about the guy, what they're talking about is what was initially the thing that caught them in the first place. But they haven't experienced those things, that tenderness, that concern, all of that and throughout the relationship. Right. Well, if they were, then they, they wouldn't be at that point. Um, sure. There's a thing called limerence. Do you know, the word limerence sort of describes what is like part of the fantasy relationship. So it's like mm -hmm. the fantasy is that if you don't do the work, like, you know, you're like, oh, she's so loving. She's so caring. He's so loving. He's so caring. He's always showing up properly, doing everything he can. But like, um, you know, in one mind, you're like this and another person could be at a different point in your life. So you sort of try to manipulate the relationship into fitting into this mold, right? Like he's great. He's a baseball player. He bats 335. And then the reality is he's, you know, on this, he's on the double A team and he really right. he strikes out most of the time. And uh, he also doesn't want to get better. You know right. what I'm saying? He's like, right, 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 right. And you're like, no, no, no. But when I, I swear, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, da, 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 da. Um, and that's so it's it's like a fantasy thing and that's sort of my, my stuff is like an it throughout the history since i was 18 yeah i would see somebody and i'd be like oh this girl you know da, 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 da. and you know i'm like no that's that was in my head maybe not yeah. and yeah as i got older it just becomes like a crutch of like you're like i could catch myself now doing it with people um and you're like oh this is like if someone's unavailable you take that and then you manipulate it into something um, and this could actually happen in the relationship, right? Because the relationship starts going down for whatever reason and go back. And I think the only way to really cure all of that is to got to give things a break and give things space and then really like take a look at yourself and why you're doing. That's why I say going, I'm, I'm going back to the batting cages and a lot of self-development because I'm like, I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. If I didn't work on a certain things anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, you got to work on those things, but I don't think you, I'm mm -hmm. just saying, don't put life on pause, like right, live no. life. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, what I mean yeah, is exactly. even, even emotion, relationships, dating and stuff, it's like, don't put it on pause because while you're putting on pause, I mean, this is really how, how you got there in the first place. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, um, you know, a, re a retarded and I don't mean in that way, but a, a retarded sense of, of, of dealing with social in the first place, you get a late start, then you're in this situation. Then you have, you're incarcerated. And then you're, you know what I'm saying? So now you're 28, 30, and you haven't had really any real experience in the social My dynamics. first real, real, I had like a girlfriend I was 22, 21, right. 22. Right. I had one when I was 29. Right. Then I went my entire 30s. I got a girlfriend at 39 that ended now at like 42. 
And Mm -hmm. then, you know, I was 39, turning 40 and and like, um, and you're like, damn, like, what did I do in between? And you're like, there's, you know, I'm like right now where I'm at, I'm like, no, the online dating, that shit's not for me. You know, I'm sure it could be, but I wouldn't, I don't do it. I wouldn't do it healthily. I'm just like, no, I live in New York. I'm, you know, I'm out here. And but why, why like, do you, why do you perceive that mm-hmm. as something different than anything else? Um, It's just something I wouldn't, I, I meet so many people in general. Oh yeah. So are, you, like, so are you saying that you don't I'm need I'm very it? much a romantic. It's like, I'd write, yeah, I don't need it. Like last person I met, I met like, you know, last person I was with, I met in a journey of like running. Yeah, running yeah, throughout yeah. the thing. I think that's that's an awesome. You know, I met the person in an elevator. So well, I mean, but you yeah. gotta meet people. I mean, the, the, you the gotta fact, meet. Yeah, you gotta meet people. So if I don't see any difference with the dating apps than anything else. In fact, to a certain extent, the dating apps allow Could be you even know, better because you allow you to just be like, boom. Yeah, you're like, you're what no, is no this? Bullshit. But yeah, you can also find more. You, in theory, you're supposed, depending on the app, you actually should have something in common, a lot more than just a stranger that you would meet at a bar or a restaurant. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it it actually cultivates more people and supposedly something that you have in common. Well, I also think what's interesting about that is the fact that you're not emotionally attached to the way in which you meet. Like it's on an app. It's like I I got a date. I'm on the app. Okay. Do how okay, do do I like this person? Don't I like? Uh, I mean, I don't really like them. So you don't even have to go. Wow, I really met them, and then it was just so so cool. When we went, and she said this, and I said that. Again, that's going into back to what I'm saying is about never letting emotion have a seat at the table. I mean, you need a a clear, concise idea of what what you what what your where your current location is and what your destination is. You know. Um, I think those all of those things are really, really, really important. And, uh, you know, when you do that, you, you're you, I think you're just better off. I I, I, I sort of feel like um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting. I remember this, I, I respect that. I respect mm, that, you know, I, um, and I get the romantic thing. But but the thing is, great relationships is work. Like it's right. It's, yeah. The romance is in the beginning. Of the, yeah, that's great. It's true. It, it, it is true. It's like, well, it's it's taken back from like, how did my parents meet? Oh, they met, at, you know, at a party in, in real life, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, I met Matt, I met you in an elevator. I met you at the supermarket. And you're like, where do we meet? And you're like, I swiped on 117 girls. Yes. And I was like, meet me for coffee. And yeah. I tried to sleep with you immediately. You know what I mean? Whatever. Right, 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 right. Like, it's an app. Right. But on the app, like there you're right there's no it's just like it's just this a number i'm trying to meet you people let me see. okay yeah. right you're trying to meet so everyone's swiping right and swiping left but in yeah. real life we do this too but right. it's just emotionally taxing because if you're like i don't want like you look at it and you're like you're literally constructing the person that you want you're like this is the age this is the and i need them yeah. to do this this is how yeah. you need to do that and you do give yourself a better chance than randomly meeting someone and you have to get to know them. And then they tell you, oh, by the way. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that doesn't work for me. You know, well, you, you know, what's crazy. The uh, I, I was just in, in when we were, t- you know, just thinking about this, it hit me. I don't think I've ever been on a app date. Like I've never, ever talked mm. to a chick off. Of, I never really got him off of a, no. an app or something like that. I mean, I think for at one point in time, I was I, I also I also kind of always had a uh, I had a roller fuck always kind of I always had a steady. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you had a roll, You had a roller dick. <laughs> a roller dick. <laughs> a roller dick. <laughs> Let me pull out my roller dick. Hold on. Yeah, it, I, I always kind of and it was always somebody on, on deck. I had always had somebody on deck in case. And you know what I'm saying? It was just but but I mean, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that I when it came to women and socially engaging with something, it was something that I did very early on. And I always and I and I, and I just got good at it. But it's something that, you know, it's just like freestyling. Well, you make you, the you, world your app. I mean, yeah, that's what you, you do. Yeah. You just literally swipe right and grab a girl. You don't go, get hey. you get in order to freestyle. You got to do it. You got to you got to get right. out there. You that's the thing. When you 
you perform and stuff like that. I don't know. No. Like we can like we perform because we're like losers, and now all of a sudden, mm. like people were desirable objects. Like I felt like shit about myself. I get on stage, destroy another rapper, and now I am. I could literally bag Paris Hilton, and, and like he could have been a trash rapper. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's and the and and shit. she could have been a trash human being. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even the fact that we yeah. and and often was. So it's what I'm saying is. It's so skewed in the in terms of what we decide as value. And then when these people unfold as to what their true character is and who they are as people and their insecurities. Jewish. I don't think the apps ever work for me. I think one time I went I went to someone's show off of it and it was like, you yeah. know, but also people will know who I am in the Jewish community. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, I also like to roll up and I don't want people to know me as my stage persona. I want people to like me for me. Like that's the whole thing. And that's, that's a big thing. Like, like, uh, you know, and coming from like a traumatic background and not to say it's tra- trauma, but like when you have, uh, like you look at your friends and most of the friends you have are either, you know, dead or in jail, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Due to the nature of the stuff you were involved in, right, drugs right. and alcohol and stuff. Or, and, or performer friends start dying early because of health complications or drugs um, or suicide or something like that. And we all have friends and performers like that. You know, you, you, you look and you're like, where, where can I go that's just normal, where people are not like that, right? And it's just completely. So for yeah, performers, but, I think. But the, the, the irony the, the is that's what the different. apps that's what the apps would be. And also whatever you present is what you are. So it doesn't matter. You could, I mean, I'm not the same maniac that I am on stage and talking about. Well, you know, I, other, I am. Well, I am. yeah, that's a different story, but you choose that. You choose, yeah, But even that's, that's not true, Dante, because you're up there talking about sometimes, sometimes I watch you, you know, sometimes you go blue on the nights and you're talking about fucking and sucking and this and that and off stage. And then you're like, Hey, you see that documentary? I just watched this documentary about Oppenheimer, not the movie, I mean- the documentary. <laughs> That's where all the real stuff is. I gotta close out home. one second. Hey, bitch, what's right? <laughs> <laughs> but I am. I I'm that too. A picture. Yeah, yeah. And this is something I did. I painted it in fucking um, New Zealand. This is a. If you look at it, right? And it's like whatever. It's you know, it's like it looks like a child painted it. But that's like how old I am emotionally. So this is what I'm coming <laughs> up with. <laughs> like, like, but I felt so good to just be like, you know what? Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like a normal. If you put me next to a 42 year old guy on Wall Street, he'll be like, whoa, that's so much cool what you do. And I'm like, yeah, but you like, you learned how to wake up to go to work at nine. Like I'm just waiting. All of a sudden I've, I've like got a commitment at 9 a.m. And I'm like sort of becoming normal. And yeah. a big thing that I deal with is just like the scheduling and normalcy and sort of uh, coach, like commitment. You can do that too. Normal. What's normal? Uh, no, no, no. But what I mean is is being part of society when you're looking for dates. You're probably not. I'm not really interested in being with uh, some you know late you know cabaret singer that stays up till four a.m. Yeah, I get either. it. Like I'm. I want. But is you know that is I that is that based on logistics? Or it's just you don't want you don't want some goofy yeah, bitch singing. Yeah, because I want a family and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't want some bitch singing late. I get it. Uh, I get it. I get it. But I'm gonna tell you something. Here's you know we talk about normalcy. Keep in mind, serial killers got to go to the grocery store too. They they yeah. go they go and they buy tomatoes With- and <laughs> lettuce and <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey Jeffrey Dahmer had to, probably went to a couple different places to get that fridge. Yeah. Yeah, He's exactly. like, hey, do yeah, you guys he price match? Whole- do you guys? He was, he was yeah. at PC Richards. Look, if I find it for cheaper. Someplace, Jeffrey, can I get reimbursed for this freezer that I'm? I'm can know? I? I Jeffrey need the Dahmer. freezer to be a little bigger than the fridge. I mean, I don't want to walk in freezer, but listen, um, uh, you're the salesman. You really want me to buy this? Would you mind climbing in the freezer for me? Could you just see if you fit? Let me. How tall are you? <laughs> he he has a voice that's similar to. Uh, uh, I saw Jim Gaffigan. I did a show with Jim Gaffigan last night. <laughs> You know, you know, really he's he's really <laughs> pale. <laughs> Yo, let's uh, let's. Um, I, let's I, I gotta let's... wrap it up because I got. Speaking of, I'm um, speaking of pale. Um, I have to go to therapy right now, and I'm gonna be okay. Go do your thing. Plug, plug your yeah, stuff real quick. Plug your stuff real quick, and then we gotta do the Patreon. We'll do it, Harry. Um, uh, no worries. Yeah. Um, uh, Rami on um, Hinge. Just kidding. Uh, I think I uh, coach <laughs> Dilt is everywhere. Uh, K O S H A D I L L Z. That's on Instagram, Twitter, threads, uh, koshadillsworld.com. 
Um, I got a Time Out New York show. I do a Black Jewish collaborative called Solvay at Time Out New York. Check that out. Um, just DM me for stuff. And I think, uh, yeah, if you want to reach out, just hit me on the gram, Twitter, all that. Cool, cool. Harry, Bye. quick. You could hit me up, all my social media, at Harry Turjanian. And uh, please join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. We're doing the bonus content. And if you need any relationship consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And if you want from me, you can go to DanteNero.com, click on consult. You can get me all social medias, Dante Nero or some version of that. Google me, bitch. Uh, by uh, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. Peace. We out.